Hello my loves, it's Kiana and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Um, it's been a minute. This video, as you guys see by the title, I got into a car accident. I wanted to just tell my story because I have not been on here for about a month. It's not because of that. There's just been a lot going on this whole year already and it's only the third month into the year. Happy 2024. I broke my computer, so I haven't been able to edit for you guys. I want to post and I want to get back to YouTube, so this video is going to have to go up somehow. I turned 22 for my 22nd birthday. My boyfriend got me a puppy. She is so cute, which is my favorite thing ever. Her name is Sky. A little baby, but she's um, three months now, and she's been a lot to handle. On top of that, I started my an internship for medical assisting, um, which I will get more into that later. And now my accident. My accident was about three weeks ago. If you are new here, I do a lot of vlogs and like lifestyle content. I didn't want like my first video back being a vlog of just like my a day in the life and then not explaining what's been going on recently with me. It's gonna be this video I'm gonna be referring to a lot probably for the next year, my recovering process and all that stuff. I don't want this video to be too long, which it might because this is kind of a long story. Get your drinks because this video is gonna be a little bit lengthy. Hopefully not. Also, I'm drinking Bloom, not sponsored, but like sponsor me because these are so good. Oh, look at how cute my cup is. My friend got me this. Let's just go ahead and get started with this video. Like I said, I've been interning for as a medical assistant. So February 16th is when I started my internship. Um, that was on a Friday. Monday was my second day at my internship, which was the 19th. And then the 20th, it was when I was on my way to my internship. February 20th is when the accident happened. I start my internship at 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So it is a full day. I left pretty early in the morning. I spent the night at my boyfriend's house that day and he was actually in the accident with me. So he came with me because I was gonna go drop him off at his grandma's house. He wanted to go to his grandma's, so I was gonna go take him to his grandma's. I was gonna go to work because his grandma's house and my work it wasn't that far. So the accident happened around 7.30ish in the morning because I had to be to work at eight o'clock. Not a lot of traffic on the freeway at all. And we were maybe like 10, not even 10 minutes into the, to the freeway. We don't know how this accident happened or what happened in front of us to cause the accident. We were in a five collision car crash. I was driving, we weren't even listening to music so we would have heard something ahead of us did not hear nothing. We both didn't see it coming. I went to go look to my left because we were in the far left lane. Of, it was either the second or third lane to the left, far left lane. And I went to go look to my left shoulder to go turn to the left lane. And as soon as I went to go look back straight in front of me, the switch lanes, the person in front of me had already hit the person in front of them. I had no time to stop at all. The way that it happened, it was so fast so insanely like i like milliseconds fast i was in a lot of shock and that's where it kind of went blurry i don't know if i like braced myself in the accident i don't i don't remember i feel like i might have i can't remember i know my boyfriend for sure put his arm out in front of me um so that i wouldn't go more forward thankfully we were both wearing ice belts remember like my not seeing anything in front of me anymore because my hood went up at this point i was in a lot of shock like, a lot of shock where i started almost passing out and i have never passed out before and i just remember i need to get out of the car i need to get out of the car because it's smoking the smell of the airbags smell like burnt tire burnt rubber it smelled so bad in my car my car i could see was smoking from the front so in my head i'm like oh my god my car's gonna blow up my car's gonna be on cat like catch on fire i went to go try to open my door couldn't open it my eyes were like slowly like i can feel myself doing this like i could I had no energy i feel like i literally had nothing in me to open that damn door and it really scared me. I didn't get the keys out of the car. Like the keys would not come out. My gear shift stick thing flew off. Don't know where that went. My boyfriend can tell that I was very like not there mentally. I was trying so hard with all my might to open the door but I just remember like being like <gasps> like I couldn't breathe in the car and something hurt. Something felt not right here in this situation and i was the last car to hit so i'm glad that i was the last car to hit that collision because it could have been a different story 
if there was a car behind me. My boyfriend ran around the side to come open my door. He was hysterically crying because the way that I looked, it was a weird, it literally felt like a, a movie scene. I tell myself to this day, I think he saved me. Oh, I'm gonna start crying. I think he saved me because him putting his arm out in front of me did a lot for me. And if he wasn't there, I don't think I would have been able to get out of the car on my own. I think I would have been able to get out of the car on my own if it wasn't for him being there. Um, so he came around the side. He came around the side. Um, he opened my door. He helped me get out of the car. And I couldn't walk. I kept saying, I can't walk. My back hurts. Something hurts. And I was like, I was breathing in a way where I couldn't talk at the same time, like, I just got the wind knocked out of me, obviously, so I felt, I thought that that was just like, I couldn't catch my breath, you know, at that point, I'm like, I got the wind knocked out of me, I can't talk, I'm like losing my breath, and at the same time, I'm like slowly shutting my eyes, wanting to pass out. My boyfriend comes, grabs me by the arm, another man comes, and he grabs me by the arm, I think he was another guy either in traffic or just like helping with the whole collision that happened, I'm on the side of the, they they bring me to the side. I'm standing with a lady and she's like holding me, but I'm standing up. And at this point, I'm like, I need, I kept telling her like, I need to sit down. I need to sit down. I don't feel good. I'm, I'm going to pass out. Like, I'm not okay. There's like nurses that came out of nowhere. And I'm pretty sure they were from the accident. I'm like, I need to sit down because I don't feel good. So they all help me lay down and somebody gives me a backpack. I'm laying down with a backpack like on my head as like a pillow i remember chris just like freaking out and like like running around everywhere trying to get stuff out of our car that's like important like my purse my wallet our phones um any like valuable important things that we needed at that very moment i just remember telling chris like i'm gonna be okay because he was freaking out and i don't want to freak him out more i kept telling him like i'm gonna be okay i'm gonna be okay even though in my head i was like i need to go to the fucking ambulance like i need to go to a hospital like right now I'm, like profusely sweating on the floor and i just remember like looking to the side of me i remember looking at all the traffic way way back like the traffic was insane because of the accident it actually took people almost an hour to get to work that day and i know that because like our friends we were talking to some of our friends some of their co-workers were in the on the freeway a lot of people that like i knew somehow were on that same freeway as i was which was crazy telling chris i'm like laying on the floor like i need to go to a I need to go to the hospital because my back hurts really bad and I don't know what's wrong. I just either felt like I got the wing knocked on me so badly and I just need to like calm down for a second or something's wrong because I was like lit. The way I was laying on the floor, this is how a back should be when you're laying on the floor. My back was like, I was like arching my back like I couldn't lay my back flat at all. I was like something's wrong. And he called the ambulance, we got ambulance, I was the only person in that accident that had to go to the hospital. It was a pain getting in onto those, the bed stretcher things. That shit hurt so bad because my back was in so much pain and I had no idea what was wrong. They had no idea what was wrong. They kept asking me in the ambulance, any feeling in your legs? Do you have any feeling in your hands? And I was like, yes, I can feel everything. My back, I don't know what's wrong with my back, but my back just hurts so bad. Let me tell you, this was some of the worst pain I have ever and probably will ever experience. Like, I could probably have a kid now, and I don't, like, I can probably handle that shit. But, like, this was, I don't know how to explain it. I definitely have a really high pain tolerance. I've always kind of known that about myself, but this really tested my patience with this one. Because this was, like, not, really don't know how to explain that pain. And I really don't ever want to go through that again. On the way to the hospital, um, they were asking me like all these questions about myself. And mind you, I'm in my scrubs. I have like my badge on for my internship and stuff. Because I was in so much pain, I couldn't really talk. So I was like showing everybody my badge. Like this is my name. Hopefully I had that on me because I really couldn't speak at that point. Um, Chris went in the ambulance with me. In the ambulance for what felt like a 40 minute car ride which was only maybe like 10 15 minutes it was the worst pain ever because going over bumps like and we did not have no sirens on or nothing for me like we were just cruising they asked me if i wanted any pain medication and i was like yes i was like wait what are you gonna give me and um he was like oh i'm gonna give you fentanyl and i'm like mm -mm, no 
like in my head in my head I'm like no he's gonna give me some like off the streets fentanyl I don't want that <laughs> so I'm like no I don't want anything like I'm fine I'm good I'll just wait till I get to the hospital to the hospital they had to take off my clothes and because I was wearing scrubs they had to cut off my scrub top because I couldn't lift up my arms in my mind I was like oh I'm gonna be here for like a few hours and then I'll just go home because in my head I was still thinking I just had really bad whiplash, so I'm gonna go home soon. You know, I'm gonna be here for maybe like a day or two and then I'll go home. No, Kiana, like that, you wish. Take off all my clothes, take off all my jewelry because they're like, we're gonna do a cat scan on you. We were in the room for probably like maybe 30 minutes and then I went to go get a CT scan. They like rolled my bed into like this place, CT scan, cat scan, whatever. And that was so painful because I had to lay on this like they had to like keep moving me with between all these beds and it hurt so bad I would like literally scream in the hallway because I I couldn't do it I got like my scans and stuff and then they actually got me into a room I went to the trauma floor at the hospital my dad was already there at that point um and my mom because she was out of town she was like maybe like an hour away from us still this is where kind of like my days blend. The first day we got there was the accident. Second day they told me that I needed to go get an MRI done. So I went to go get an MRI and I was so terrified to go get one because I've never, never gotten an MRI done. Mind you, everything is my first. I've never broken a bone. I've never gone to an accident like this big. I've never even gotten to like a little fender bender. I have never got MRIs done. I've never been into like a hospital for something like major like this, which knock on wood, never happens again. I told myself I'm never coming back to a hospital unless I'm having kids. So the second day I had my MRI, which I was so scared because I thought I was, I'm like pretty claustrophobic. I can get pretty claustrophobic, but it was more painful for me to experience like laying there for like five minutes after the CT and the MRI I finally got my results after two days of being there they told me that I'm going to need surgery on my back because I had a spinal injury I had broke there is a crack in my spine I broke the L1 L2 and I think it was L4 I can't remember one of my bones is literally cracked sideways if my bone went any further back into the vertebrae, I could have been paralyzed from my waist down. And that's where I think my boyfriend came and saved my day because he did put his arm out in front of me. And I guess, you know, the seatbelt did hold me, but I think what his, his more of like a me from going more forward into the steering wheel, I think helped. Somebody hit me from the back, I probably would have been paralyzed at that point because if I were to go even further, my spine would have been done. God was really with us on that day. My angels were with us. They told me that I had to get surgery. Surgery was going to be like the next day or something like that. I don't really remember a lot in the hospital. I was on a lot of medication. Hard drugs, let me tell you. I was on fentanyl. I ended up taking fentanyl, um, which is fine because it's just hospital fentanyl. I was taking other things. I don't really remember the names of them but they were pretty strong fentanyl i think was one of the hardest ones that i was on and even that wasn't doing much for me it was like four days where i was in pain so tuesdays when i got there tuesday wednesday thursday friday friday is the day that i got surgery so four days in pain on meds laying in the bed i wasn't allowed to stand up I wasn't allowed to roll over on my side. I had to be laying on my back at all times. Wasn't allowed to use, get up to go to the bathroom. Um, I didn't have a catheter in, but they were something called a pirouette where you just kind of like, it grips onto you so you can pee, which I don't know if that's TMI, but I didn't have a catheter in. On a Friday is when I got my surgery. And let me just tell you, being in this hospital, I don't think anybody should ever lay in a bed for that long. <laughs> that's the only part I hated. Everything else was perfect. I loved all my nurses the people that were helping me Like I had to have like three people in the room like they're all constantly cleaning me up I also wasn't eating a lot at all Because me being fully stressed in the hospital was terrible. I was not eating. Um, I actually had lost seven pounds in the hospital 
and I still have to obviously gain all that back. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to do anything for four days on that bed. Watched a bunch of the same movies over and over again. I so many family members and friends come and everybody's praying for me and everybody was doing all these things for me. Like I got I got 12 flowers in the hospital and every nurse was like, your room smells the best in here. I felt very loved by so many people around me. Definitely that was the most I think I've ever felt loved by so many people. Everybody had me in their prayers. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everything. It was a long four days not knowing like, you know, if I move a certain way, I could also still be paralyzed. So I couldn't move and it was very scary to know that the doctors were like you literally got saved by the grace of god because i don't know how this is even possible but you got really really lucky it was really also hard for me to sleep during that time because honestly, like i would like go to sleep and then like have bad dreams wake up or like my whole body would be twitching i had to take probably at least nine different pills every single day and it was got to a point where it was so hard where i was throwing them all up because also I wasn't eating well. Yeah, those were some pretty tough days in the hospital. I wasn't allowed to shower, so like every night somebody would come in and like shower me with like washcloths. On top of that, I had no Wi-Fi, so I couldn't really text people back. I could really only call people and I wasn't on any social media, which was kind of nice because I did a little detox from social media. But I met a lot of really, really amazing nurses and i want to go back and like hug all of them that was my like four days in the hospital the surgeon the neurosurgeon that that did my spine that friday i was gonna have surgery and so i went really early in the morning terrified because the only surgery i've ever had was my wisdom teeth but like that's not anything compared to this told that i was just gonna be put on anesthesia and that it would be at least a three hour surgery. This was a really good surgeon. He did an amazing job. Mind you, when they're like taking me to like my MRIs, my CAT scans, even to like go out of my room, I had to be pushed in my long ass bed. <laughs> Pushing that bed hurt so bad, terrible with all those bumps. They said that it's one of the scariest procedures because they, once I'm on my bed, the bed that I've been laying in, they have to move me to another bed, but they have to roll me and face me down a different bed because I have to work on my back but that could cause a lot of problems because I can again be paralyzed like I said he was a really good surgeon so he did everything perfectly fine with me he also told me that it was going to be one of the worst pains if not the same as I felt as the accident or 10 times worse so I completely forgot about that like that just did not cross my mind at all. I woke up from my surgery, they like rolled me up to my room. I don't even remember how I got to my room. Because I am so tiny, um, the anesthesia lasted at least five hours in my system, which it should only be one hour. I remember crying and I was in the worst pain ever. Honestly, it felt just the same if not even worse than when the accident happened. No surgery is not gonna be an easy breezy thing. It's gonna hurt. He was not kidding when he said that that was gonna be the worst. And it wasn't like that for just the day. No, it was like that for two days straight. So I was in pain for another six days. I was taking at least like nine different medications for myself. On top of that, they were trying to give me <laughs> like narcotics and stuff. It was a lot, it was a lot of pain for those six days right after surgery the next day so at their sixth day that i was there they were like we're gonna start moving you around anybody with a spinal injury has to do this thing called a log roll flat like completely flat on your back and they like all roll you to either side of the bed you gotta move throughout the night too you can't just be in one spot so they would come almost every two hours in the night and come and move me around the day after surgery they all told me you're gonna have to start walking because You've been in bed for almost a week now. You start walking, you need to get up, you need to learn how to sit up. You're gonna have to relearn everything again. We're going to have to learn how to sit up out of bed. You're gonna learn how to walk again. You're gonna need a walker. You might also need a wheelchair, depending on your recovery and how fast you recover. I was hearing all these different things and I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna have either a wheelchair or a walker for the rest of my time of my recovery and it's, I didn't know what to do, but I was very determined to, at the end, not use a walker and make sure that I don't have a wheelchair. If it happened to be like that, then it happened to be like that, but I just, 
I wanted to go back to my normal living life again and normal self so I was very determined and very I'm gonna do everything I can to get out of this bed tell me all right let's stand up let's try to at least sit up in bed it took me almost an hour just to sit up in my bed because of how much pain i was in I had, um like really hard strong narcotics in me before i had to sit up because i didn't want to be in so much pain you know that was the worst because i was so dizzy and as soon as i sat up i was throwing up everything and not even everything because i didn't really have a lot of food throwing up while you're after back surgery not the best let me tell you because you know how you're just like no uh, uh. <laughs> like three days after surgery i was trying to learn how to walk slowly but surely and it was like throwing up every single time every single time i sat up i threw up my camera's slowly dying so i'm gonna try to hurry this up a week in the hospital and then the second week i went to a rehab place to get better and i did physical therapy, occupational therapy, I learned how to shower, I learned how to walk again. I didn't use my walker the second day I was at therapy, learning how to do so much that I didn't think I was gonna have to relearn again. But I'm so glad that like I can do everything now. I still have back, I'm still not gonna be fully recovered. It takes me at least three months for me to go back to work again. And then six months I'll be somewhat like fully back to like my normal self again one year i will be completely recovered but yeah i have five screws in my back now my back is still healing i'll just show you guys what my back looks like i mean it's like full of fuzz my back currently it's my whole story of me being in the hospital for two weeks um hopefully i didn't miss anything my i gotta end this video because my camera's dying i'm so grateful and thankful and i thank god every day that i am alive and that i survived out of there that my boyfriend is okay and that i'm okay he did get hurt um but he wasn't as hurt as i was you know we both got seatbelt marks and bruises and i had a bruise on my eye i'm so thankful and grateful that i am alive and i feel like i really did get a second chance at life again i just hope that everybody will stay safe on the freeways and the roads we weren't driving crazy at all but it just shows you how fast something can happen slowly but surely going through my recovery process in my healing and um, i'm feeling a lot better now i'm able to like walk again and i go on i try to go on walks i'm just glad that i would rather have this right now than not be here so i'm i want to cry but i'm so thankful that i am alive and yeah that just makes me look at life a different way and very appreciative of that.